You're thinking about buying a C5 Corvette. It's an excellent choice, but I might be a little biased because I've owned mine for 10 years. And even after all this time, it is still the car that I dream about more than any other. Think about that for just a second. Anyways, you found a C5 Corvette that's for sale that meets most of your general criteria. And to me, that means it's probably the right exterior color, the right interior color. It's got the right transmission that you're looking for. And despite what the forums might say, that is solely based on your preferences and not anybody else's. Also, it's got a number of miles on it that you find reasonable and the price is what you deem to be in the ballpark. Now today, most C5s are going from between 10 and $20,000, which is a serious chunk of change. So you owe it to yourself to carefully and thoughtfully evaluate any C5 that you're considering to buy. You also owe it to yourself to be as efficient as possible by having a process in place to help you identify the deal killers associated with the C5 that you're looking at. The quicker that you can identify the duds, the quicker that you can move on to another C5 that might just be the one you've been searching for. So let's get started. You're gonna probably start out by texting the owner of the car to see if they still have it for sale. But once you establish that they do, you gotta text them back and just let them know that you wanna have a quick conversation to talk about the car. I know this might make some of you younger guys uncomfortable, but you gotta have a real conversation. That way you can get to know them a little bit and ask them why they're selling the car, how long they've owned the car. Does it have any mechanical damage, interior damage, things like that? And while you're having that real live conversation with the C5's owner, it should allow you to get enough indirect information from your conversation to size them up and determine if they were a passionate C5 owner that took really good care of the C5, or maybe it was just a car to them and they kind of did maintenance when they could. This is valuable information you just can't get from texting. So assuming the conversation with the seller of the C5 went well and they haven't scared you away, go ahead and ask them if they've got a Carfax or an auto check because if they're not aware, potential buyers of C5s are a notoriously picky group of people. And even if you don't end up buying their car, it's certainly something of value that'll help them with other buyers to sell their car. So hopefully they have one, it never hurts to ask. And now go ahead and set up an appointment to see the car. So in the meantime, before you go look at the C5, definitely consider purchasing the Carfax or the auto check. They're not 100% flawless, but when you're spending over 10 grand on a car, probably closer to 15, I think they're well worth the money. So if you do end up getting your hands on one, be sure to look for things like hopefully just one or two owners, no accident or flood damage, and a consistent service history. Now, before we go any further, you've got to ask yourself a question and be honest with yourself. How good are your mechanical skills? If they're lacking, you've got to find a trusted friend who's pretty mechanically inclined and bring him or her with you to make sure that you cover all of the bases. Now, let's talk about my top 10 tips for evaluating a C5 Corvette. First, let the seller know that you want to observe the C5's engine from a cold start and that when you get there, you'll be opening the hood and touching the head or the engine block to confirm it hasn't been warmed up first. Make sure you insist on this because most engines, including the LS engine, typically make the most noise when they're cold and you don't want to find out a day or two later after you buy the C5 and you give it its first cold startup that there's a bunch of clatter. Just know that when our C5 start up with their LS engines from a cold state, there typically is a little bit of noise, maybe a little bit of piston slap and other engine noises. That quiet down in the first few minutes of operation as things warm up. And if it doesn't get any quieter, then there might be something wrong. When you first get to the seller's house, be sure to take a peek under the C5 and make a note of any leaks or spots on the ground. Then, just like you said you were going to, open up the hood and feel the cylinder head or the engine block to make sure it's room temperature and that it hasn't been warmed up. If the engine is warmer than room temperature after they confirmed it would be a cold start, then I would be suspicious of that. Next, start up the C5 and let it idle for 15 minutes or so while you're checking over the car. If the C5 has a manual transmission, 
once in a while have somebody go in the car and push in the clutch and see if that changes the noises that you're hearing. Manual transmission cars are kind of inherently noisy, so keep that in mind. And again, that's why you want somebody to push that clutch in and hold it once in a while. While you're listening to the engine and letting it idle for 10 to 15 minutes, it's an excellent time to walk around the car and inspect every exterior body panel from top to bottom. Be sure to note any collision damage, cracks, scratches, paint fade, or even previous spots where someone may have worn through with a buffer. These cars are 20 years old, so you're likely to find some imperfections, and it's up to you to decide what you can live with. Now let's take a look for any structural damage left behind from any accidents over the past 20 years. As you can imagine, after a collision, most of the reconditioning effort is spent on the exterior of the car. Sometimes frame damage is left behind, but you'll never see it, especially on a low to the ground Corvette, unless you take a look. To check for this damage, I like to take a peek underneath the hood of the C5, because there are portions of the frame rail that you can see on the passenger side and on the driver's side to give that a good look. Then I like to take my cell phone, turn the light on, put it on top of a board, and slide that underneath the front end of the C5 and take a look at the portions of the passenger and driver's side frame rail that you can get a glimpse of. From there, I move on to the side of the C5, stick the same board under there and check out the side of the frame rail, move to the rear of the C5, where once again, I stick the board with the camera underneath the car and I can get a little bit of a glimpse of both the passenger and the driver's side rear frame rails. If you're looking for any sort of evidence that at some point in time it was crushed from an impact and left as is, or perhaps the car was put on a frame rack and it was pulled back out, but some evidence of the impact still remains. Now I get it, some of you guys might think that this is a little bit excessive and that's fine if you want to skip this step, it's totally up to you. But for me, if I'm thinking about spending 15 grand on a car, I'm gonna take a few minutes and take a look. All right, so while you've been poking around, looking underneath, checking out the tires and the rims and the brakes and whatnot, the C5 has been running for about 15 minutes, which is long enough, so go ahead and shut it off. Now you need to think real carefully about what did it sound like when you first started it cold and what did it sound like just now when you shut it off. If it was quiet from the time you first started it to the time you just shut it off, that's awesome. If it was just a little bit noisy upon cold startup, it could be a sign of piston slap, which these LS1 motors are notorious for, and usually that's not a big deal so long as it goes away after just a few minutes. If the engine is noisy upon startup, and even after 15 minutes as you're checking things out, it stays noisy, you either want to get it checked out further or pass on this C5. Now the second reason we left the seller's C5 idling for 10 to 15 minutes so that we can check for leaks, because after all, engines don't typically leak when they're just sitting there shut off, they leak when they're running. Or once every 0.8 seconds. Ah, it's bleeding to death! So now it's time to poke our head under here one more time and see if there's any leaks that weren't there 15 minutes ago. If it's been leaking, see if you can identify what type of fluid it is, and better yet, where it's coming from. That way you kind of have an idea of what it might cost to repair the leak if you're still interested in the C5 because Leaks are not necessarily a deal killer, but they can become a bargaining chip for you when it comes time to discuss the price. 